This is like showing up to Mount Everest in sandals, you guys. Whoa. Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for taking the time to watch Hello Good Game. Today, we're talking death touch and fight effects, how they work together and how you can use them to your advantage. Let's take a look at our deck list. We have four Falmir Knights. This has Profane Insight for three. You draw a card and lose one life, which is really cool. Three is a little bit expensive, but we can cast this when we really need to find that clutch card that we're looking for. It's a 1-1 one, one with Death Touch as well. We have two Vampire of the Dire Moon, Death Touch, Lifelink, also a 1-1, one, one, and four Moss Vipers, Death Touch, a 1-1. One, one. We're rocking less of the Lifelink and more Vipers just to balance our land so it's a little bit more even in case we don't have that specific land in our go hand, we can really make use of any one drop. Moving on to two drops, we have four Orzhov Enforcers. This is a 1-2 with Death Touch and Afterlife, which means when it dies, it's gonna create a 1-1 one, one white and black spirit with flying. We have four Rabid Bites. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. Our power doesn't matter because the majority of our creatures have Death Touch, which is gonna be that automatic kill, which is what this deck is meant to demonstrate. We have four Seasons of Growth. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, scry one. Whenever you cast a spell that targets a creature you control, draw a card, our main draw engine there. Warbriar Blessing for two. Enchant creature you control. When Warbriar Blessing enters the battlefield, enchanted creature fights up to one target creature you don't control. Enchanted creature gets plus zero, plus two. Minions Return for three. This is our only three job. It has Flash, another enchantment aura. When enchanted creature dies, return that card to the battlefield under your control. Lots of times we can use this on our opponent's creature that we want to take because he's going to be blocking the death touch. Or if we say have five available, we can throw our minions return on his big baddie and then Warbriar blessing it with one of our death touch characters, take his character and uh, use that to beat him later on in the game. Moving on to our four drops, we have Okam Adversary. It's a two three. This spell costs two less to cast if your opponent controls a green permanent, which they often do which is really beneficial. It has Death Touch, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, draw a card, so there's a lot to digest there. This is one of our main creatures of the deck and our secondary draw engine. We also have Outmassle for four. Put a 1-1 one -one counter on target creature you control, then it fights target creature you don't control. If you cast three mana on the spell, creature you cast this on is gonna gain indestructible until end of turn, allowing you to kill any creature of his without losing your own. Varaska's Swarm Emirates for four. She has five loyalty when she comes on the field. A static ability of whenever a creature you control with death touch deals damage to a player or planeswalker, put a 1-1 one, one counter on that creature and then minus two create a 1-1 one, one black assassin creature token with death touch. And whenever this creature deals damage to a planeswalker, destroy that planeswalker. We have four jungled hollows, 12 forests, and six swamps. That's the deck. Let's talk a little bit about the strategy. Our strategy here is very, very simple. Get Seasons of Growth on the field as soon as possible. This is going to be your main draw engine. Secondly, Okame okay, Adversary. This is your second draw engine and your second most important card to be playing. So we'd like to see either of those or both of them in our draw hand with the appropriate land to get them there. Obviously, Seasons of Growth is better because you can always cast that for two, whereas the Adversary, you can only cast for two if our opponent controls a green permanent. However, we also really like to have a one drop in our hand. That's really important to us. For example, we can play a one drop with Death Touch on turn two. We can remove whatever creature he plays with our War Bar Blessing or a Rapid Bite if it's important. If not, we'll just continue to ramp and get those important things as we need to. That's basically it, you guys. We have these fight effects like Rapid Bite, which is really good. So this is dealing damage equal to its power. So your creature won't die when you use this, his will. Warbriar Blessing, you need to make sure that your defense is stronger than his attack because it is a fight interaction, which means they deal damage to one another. And then Out Muscle is the same unless you are paying its admin costs, at which point you will have Indestructible and Survive. That's basically it. This deck really suffers against control. I wanted to make this deck solely to inform you guys on the possibility of using fight effects and deals damage equal to effects on your death touch creatures, on his creatures and or planeswalkers which is really, really cool. So let me know what you think about this deck in the comments below. I'd really love to know if you knew about this, if this is new info to you guys, if these videos are something that you're looking forward to seeing more of. With that all being uh, said, thanks for watching you guys. I really appreciate each and every one of you who've spent the time to sit down and spend your day with me. Be sure to join us on Twitch every morning, 6 a.m. PST. And if you'd like to continue this conversation further throughout the day, if you have any questions, jump into the Discord. We are always active there. Thanks for watching. Enjoy today's footage. Match number one, let's see how we do.
It is nice having that turn one into turn two season of growth into immediate removal if we need it. Grazer is not a required removal. Withholding the fact that we have swamps available to us. Not that it really matters, but it does also get us closer to that three, or sorry, four uh, cost three adamant requirement spell out muscle. That's going to give us indestructible and the fight effect. Plus a token. Leaf can drew a lot of wrath coming down on us. So we will probably just take out uh, taking out his druid. We do have Season of Growth in play, so we don't really need to rely on Falmir Knight's draw effect. For three, we can scry the land away instead. Hopefully he plays a big baddie. And we can grab that. I'm thinking like a questing beast would be pretty hot. What do you guys think? Ah, uh, can druid. And chammer. here. Rabbit Bite is a perfect replacement for Warbrider Blessing. And probably again just ultimate removal here. More draw as well. And we can attack yet again. It's a pretty slow kill but if he's playing a creature based deck like he is here we make out really, really well. Is it worth the double draw just to target our guy? Probably. Right? Why not? If we get two for one draw all the time, that's actually pretty good. Right? We do get two creatures as well, which is really nice. All attacks here again. He's not looking to uh, block ever. And we should have maybe kept one back for defense on his hand hammer. Probably our moss wiper because it would have come back, but I'm just obsessed with aggro here. Ooh, getting hit hard with Titan's Growth. Back on the rebuttal. That's actually a really nice play with the Boreal Grazer there. I like that quite a bit. Very nice. Let's take it out again. Double draw, two for one. We didn't get that untapped land, which we were hoping for. So we can go ahead and play our tapped land. A little bit of life and a little bit more death touch on the field. Double scry, blessing can stay, even though we already have one. But he is appearing to play a heavy creature deck. So let's go ahead and continue this barrage of death touch removal. <clears throat> Our 
Hooter in the house. We have no creatures with flying, so we're safe there. And again, we're just in with straight removal at this point. Double draw. Season of Growth is one of the best free-to-play draw engines. We can go ahead and remove this as well, I feel like. Why not? Getting that draw again. Oh, we should have played that before, but I guess we didn't draw it until after. We could have played it for a cheaper amount. And let's stack the field even further. Ooh, Raskas, that's actually what we want to see. That is our main nuke slash strength ramp of the deck. Otherwise, it does take a long time with a couple one attack creatures. Uh, we got Falmir Knight up to two. He's our strongest. This hits the field. We do have War Job Enforcer to block. And here is the finisher, you guys. We could actually do both. Does it have to be... No, just green mana. Get that on the field. Make the token. Double draw. That can go. We don't need that anymore. We don't really need the land either. Now we're using out muscle. And we're gonna kill that. Everybody gets indestructible. So we could have put it on anybody. But now we got a big baddie for later as well. And again, a double draw. So it's just so much value coming out of this deck. Uh, one, two, four, five, six. We're gonna be one short, but we can kill his Nissa. Why not? Oh no! Uh, Braskus has the ability. We forgot about that. We could have just uh, done one damage and killed it. Rookie mistake, you guys. Our opponent's gonna get one more turn to come back at us. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's that. All right, so I just realized we played that first match in regular play queue. Let's jump into diamond rank here and see if we can also find maybe another creature deck. Opponent goes first, we're light on land. We do have that turn two drop. No draw engine, but we do have a Varaskas. Ouch. Let's look for that draw engine. Season of Growth is just the most important thing. And we can toss what I imagine to be a slow land here. We want to go quick, quick, quick. Our opponent's going pretty quick here as well. Nice. Turn one to rest. Goodbye, Seasons of Growth. Let's take it away. You can't get it. You can't get it. No, he's still got it. Uh, so that's going to be basically a good game. More control. Burglar at. That's totally fine with us. Let's just nuke it. Right, whatever. He knows we have a second Rapid Bite, so he's not going to play anything too good. Well, he does, actually. Wow. I wish that would work. That would be cool. Again, let's nuke this Midnight Reaper. That's a good trade. I don't mind him drawing a card. Hopefully we can grab another Seasons of Growth. There's the Nightmare Shepherd. And I just can't allow that to exist on the field. You know what I mean? We have to kill it immediately. Even though we die. Ending our turn here. Hopefully we get to execute this as a draw card. That is where it becomes useful. Looking for a land, oddly enough. Beautiful. 
we even get our Falmir Knight out, which is quite an exclusive play. All right. Land, Vraska. All right. Before I make you disappear. More death touch. How you live is how you'll die. Ouch, Murderous Rider. That sucks. One attack. Yes, we'll save the other to defend. Lifelink sucks, especially on an empty hand. Big brain play by our opponent to rock duress. Absolutely nuked our hand. Ouch. This will allow us to attack. He doesn't want to defend. Ever, even though he's got uh, a little bit of lifelink going on for him. He figures if he can attack with his rider, it offsets the damage we're doing, plus he does damage. So it's a positive equation for him. And he has a secondary rider on our blocker. Wow. Ouch. Only our 1-1 uh, one -one had death touch, so that'd be cool. Back up to 14. All right, so we do get some kind of draw engine on the field. Leaving that one death touch defender back. Getting that damage back. A secondary murderous rider can defend against our adversary gain life and shut out all of our damage and our draw effect. So that's unfortunate. He's chipping us down and gaining life with his Aria. But again, dropping these rares on us like no tomorrow. We're taking out Azaria. Let's just do chip damage until we can get another Veraskas and power our field up. That's the move here. Bolas Citadel, that's interesting. He's playing for life off the top. He decides not to go for it. Let's take that draw, looking for season. Enforcer works as well. Even if he blocks our adversary. Yeah, okay, so we get the draw, that's great. We really need to get some value going before he can uh, just play his hand and his deck as well, which is crazy. Ooh. Fanlarker gets the discard here. He needs to kill our 1 1 flying token. He can still play cards from his hand. There's no way they're all land. Ola Citadel in the house. An amazing black deck. Oh, there's the finisher, you guys. Awuga. One, two, three, four, five, six. He needs to sacrifice permanence. And then he's 
over here gaining life so he can play off the top more. Absolutely incredible. Let's take the trade there. We do get our Varaskas, but it's going to be too little too late, unfortunately. All he needs to drop is another Grey on us. Big time ouchie, but we do compete fairly well. We should have played our Falmir Knight there. I guess we still can. Twenty life still. This is uh, a match somehow. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys! One, two, three attackers means we need four defenders for sure. These don't have death touch, so they won't get tokens. We have to do it to him to grab the token as well. Semi unfortunate. Bomber. All right, you guys, let's see if we can try to find a way out of this hole somehow. Sitting on one life, uh, I'm sure that's possible. <laughs> Am I right? Here comes Gray for 10. Oh, good okay, game. Another Aria. So we came uh, not too far away, but again, we got boxed out by a mad rare deck, you guys. Woof. All right, match number two, we got boxed out by a control deck. A Teferi Avatar, that can only mean one thing. He's playing a creature deck, right, you guys? We have nice lands. We do have removal plus creatures as well. No seasons of growth. Bummer. But I believe in the heart of the cards, you guys. Our opponent dropping first. Is it mono red or is it Azorus control? Maybe even Esper control. No, Simic Ramp. Uh-oh, possibly Team Air Reclamation as well. We should have taken that Falmir Knight first, but let's potentially save that for the draw. Learn a little bit more about what our opponent's playing. Unless he plays a creature, there's no need for us to remove it. So they will have creatures because it's an adventure deck. Team your adventure, in fact, Edgewall Innkeeper. Let's get this out for a discount without removing his innkeeper. He's gonna giant it, I'm pretty sure. We have our fourth land. Another Rabid Bite does support our playstyle, one of our favorite cards in the deck. And let's go ahead and get this other Death Touch creature out as well. All right, he kills our draw engine. Bummer. Or one of our draw engines, I should say. So if he's rocking Scorching Dragonfire, you know, you absolutely know he has a Bone Crusher Giant as well. But he's probably looking for a draw here through his Edgewell Innkeeper now. Hopefully we can avoid that. We do. Perfect. No two drop creature with adventure. Okay, that's good. Let's toss that enforcer out. We want the enforcer to die. 
so we will use our Warbriar Blessing on our Falmere Knight. Drawing our Varaskus now, which is really good. Hmm. Now he steps on us. Interesting. Raskus can still stay there. We're looking to draw that. Losing both of our creatures. Bummer. And now he can play either his questing beast, or his questing beast, his love struck beast. Or his giant. He's choosing to go in with more land. There we go. Now he's going to get to draw through his innkeeper because we didn't remove it quick enough. And this field is starting to stack up against us. We're lucky enough to get removal here. Let's get rid of this innkeeper. Take the draw. That should have happened a long time ago. Let's start chipping these health points down. Secondary Clover, that's never good. Hopefully he's out of adventures by now. Negative. He's going to his sideboard in best of one. Wow. That's classy, you guys. Basically taking whatever he wants from a selected pool of 15 cards that he's able to use with his deck. Also known as a sideboard, which you normally use in between games in a best of three style play, also known as traditional. So he gets to copy this twice because it was two clovers. So taking three cards from his sideboard, return to nature, so he's gonna nuke us. He's got a great henge, gains life, draw engine. And a Domri's Ambush for more removal. Feels bad. Kill this beast, take the draw, boy. Get those health points. I mean, he's got the Great Henge, which sucks. There's no getting around that. He's gonna have to spend all his mana doing utility work this turn, though. Not bad. Our adversary will survive. Maybe not. Right, either of these is a bad target for his Dormer's Ambush. Return to Nature on our Seasons of Growth is probably the most appropriate play he could do. <clears throat> Love Struck Beasts. He wants just a ton of tokens. He's going to try to go wide. Respectable. And now, of course, whoa, should be his return to nature. It is an instant speed spell as well. He could do that on our upkeep, I guess. He wants to Dahmer's ambush our adversary with his questing beast, I'm pretty sure. Or I keep calling it questing beast, love struck beast. That's basically how good it is. Let's see, he's really contemplating this decision. He does go with the removal of Seasons of Growth rather than the creature removal. He decides he can just block it, and we do get a Rabbit Bite, which is quite nice. Now 
No, 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 no. I meant to put that back in my hand. That's unfortunate. Coming until it's too late. We may as well attack with our adversary as well because he's just going to ambush it next turn. So at least this way we get some form of removal. Oh, I'm running out of room to store my trophies. Right. We have a decent field. He's probably just going to play his great hand here. And that's going to basically ruin everything we've worked for so far. Gaining him life every time it taps. We have no draw engine other than our adversary, which, like I said, is going to be toast this turn due to Domri's ambush. Feels bad. But again, we're kind of holding our weight against some of these top tier decks, which is really nice. And this video is meant more for demonstration purposes rather than to be a competitive deck. Like, clearly, our opponent's objective is. Again, there's only so much you can do with a free-to-play deck. Some of them work a lot better than others. Um, but we don't want to stop with just three or four that work really good right now. We want to continue to educate you guys on the possibilities. So when new sets come out, you're going to know uh, more and like uh, understand different, action, different interactions that can occur. So, I mean, our opponent's got a really good field state. He can actually discard cards, put his Fae back into his hand, and go back to his sideboard, and grab three more cards, which is crazy, right? I mean, we've got this 6-6 six, six and the, uh, the two big boys up here as well. So less than ideal. Let's just keep trimming this field, I guess, right? He can't do it, so it would be a good time to do this. Let's get his flyer out. Yeah, 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 that's the move. Normally he would have land to return it to his hand, but he doesn't. Let's go again with our Death Touch character. He needs to sacrifice his beast to kill or triple block with tokens. He could even double block with a Fey and a token, which would be my recommended move. I gotta quit thinking like that. Okay, no, we made it. Okay, he just chump blocked. He could have double blocked and we... Oh, no. Yeah, and that would have worked. We would have chosen only to kill his fate and the token would have survived. Uh-oh. Edgewell Innkeeper in the house. That's not good. So our opponent's got unlimited draw engine and also an unlimited value engine. Plus more draw over here. Plus life. Plus sideboard access. So that's gonna be a hello good game. Nice. Very good work by our opponent, bullying us out. And we have rough luck today trying to demonstrate you guys what a little bit of death touch fight effect can do. Bummer. Let's see how deep he can get into his deck. He's at 35. We're up at 42 personally. Another fave of wishes. Why wouldn't you go into your sideboard for three? <laughs> so on that note, you guys, I want to remind you to join our Discord, reach out, ask about our new draft tournament or league that we're holding. It's free to enter, and we're going to have paid cash prizes for everybody, which is really, really cool. So be sure to go ahead, join the Discord, and ask us more about our draft league that we're starting because MTG Arena has announced that uh, we're going to have player-on-player -player PvP drafts, which is very exciting, you guys. This is where our road ends, though, unfortunately. Um, he's going to wipe the field of everything while surviving. His, his big guns will survive anyways, right? And uh, he's got to love Chandra Awakened Inferno as well. Out of the shadows. 
So let's just uh, give him the good game. We're gonna explode, let him outvalue us because there's no way we're making it out of this. Not a single chance, you guys. He's gonna sacrifice these two tokens as well. Understandable. I would sacrifice everything to keep these guys from gaining um, any counters on them. But again, he can just rebute and kill us with damage, right? I would let this all go through, and then he's sitting on 1, 2, 3, uh, 9, 10, 11, 16, 17 damage without any um, other shenanigans on top of that. So I would just let the damage go through. You know what I mean? And again, normally, not something I would normally do is push through like this, but we can see our opponent's hand. He has so much power, so much value, that it's never going to happen. This is like showing up to Mount Everest in sandals, you guys. Woof. We wipe our field. Uh, we do get a little bit of his wiped as well. He's gonna Storm Wrath us. So we probably should have kept that up. But again, he could just attack with a flyer, then Storm's Wrath. So there's, again, no way out of this scenario. There she is, the big girl herself, going to minus three on everything we own, and then our opponent is surely going to smash us. Oh, Wooga. So let's give him one more hello, good game, and then we're going to be on our way to save us all a little time, because apparently he has trouble closing as much, maybe a little less than we do. This was our free-to-play guide for beginners, mono white devotion, zero rares, zero mythics, it underperformed in the video, but overall, I think this is a really strong deck. Don't take those matches to heart too much. We have a lot of power and a lot of capability in this deck. Thanks for watching, you guys. I really appreciate it. Be sure to check us out live every morning on Twitch, 6 a.m. PST, and then go ahead and join the Discord if you're looking to follow up with this video. If you have any questions, any comments, jump in there, and you can reach out to me personally. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our other guides for beginners. And if you want to see some of our more popular videos, go ahead and dig into our greatest hits. Don't forget to tap subscribe and we'll see you all tomorrow.